You know, I, I think the first time you see a golf course, especially a course like this, you need to see it multiple times. Um, and I can already tell I've only played the back nine played the back nine yesterday and I saw things subtleties that I didn't pick up on last year so um, I think it it looks I said this to I'm actually staying with Katie Future's parents here in town um, and I said this to her parents last night I'm like it looks like it's a simple golf course but it's not um, so it, it looks like it's wide in areas but it's not um, and the greens I, I've, I love what they've done with the greens they seem to have widened them out a little bit maybe flattened out some of the edges um, the roll-offs aren't as extreme as I felt they were last year so I mean, they've done a great job it's beautiful it's in great shape um, you know the greens are, are firm but that's expected but you know it's they've done a great job and I'll start off, too, by saying this is your 98th start in a major. Um, what does that mean to hear that, too, uh, as well? You know, I, it, it kind of seems like a dream sometimes. Um, I feel very blessed. I feel, you know, I've, I haven't had, you know, I've had one major injury. It came at the end of 2018. But um, this is kind of where I'm going to plug my trainer because <laughs> he's, uh, he's been with me since 2004. And actually, his father worked for Chevron forever. Um, and he, my trainer, Dan, was a recipient of one of the scholarships that Chevron gives to their employees' children. So my trainer, he told me that, and I was like, no way. He's like, yeah. He's, so it's kind of cool because without him, you know, I don't, I don't think my body would have held up. Um, so I've, I've been very blessed. And, you know, again, one big injury at the end of 2018. But other than that... Um, so yeah, it feels like a dream sometimes. And one last question for me, and then I'll open it up. Um, you just talked a little bit about Chevron. There was just announced um, a purse increase to 7.9 million. I'm not sure if you heard that yet, but mm -hmm. how can you just um, speak to Chevron's um, sponsorship and partnership as well um, with this tournament? We probably should have started with that. A big, one big thank you. Um, you know, I feel like in the 24 years I've been out here, I've seen a lot of change. You see different sponsors, different venues, different tournaments, and there's always hesitation. There's always people are nervous with change, and Chevron has exceeded any expectation that any of us would have had. And it's not, it's not just about the golf tournament. It's about everything that surrounds it. it I think it's really cool having the perspective of 24 years out here. I think it's really cool to watch Chevron not only embrace the golf part of it, but the community part of it. Mm -hmm. um, they are so involved, and every little thing matters. I think when you have a sponsor and a partner that cares about the small things and they care about the details, I mean, the big things are going to are going to be even better. Mm -hmm. um, so, very grateful for Chevron um, because they took on one event that has the most tradition on our tour. And they have sur surpassed any expectation that I've had, and I don't want to speak for others, but, you know, they've, they've turned it, they're turning it into their own, and, and they're, I love how they've kept some of those little pieces of tradition. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, I'm so grateful for them, I'm thankful for them, and it's, it's just, it's amazing what they've done. Sarah? I know 99's not, not confirmed yet, but, I mean, 98. We talk about unbreakable records in golf, and your name is probably going to go down as one of the unbreakable records in golf. How do you feel when you hear that? Um, you know, and I thought about it. You know, you sometimes think there you would see things once in a generation or once in a lifetime. And, you know, even if it wasn't me, I would still want one of our players to cross the line. Like, I wouldn't care who it was. I would want an LPGA player to get to 100 um, because I think it is going to be historically once in a tour kind of deal. Um, obviously, because Jack Nicklaus is the only human to ever do this. So, you know, I, regardless if it was me or somebody else, I just, I hope I get there. Um, I appreciate Chevron helping me in this step, the 98th step. Um, I have my U.S. Open qualifier next week, so I've, I've been thinking about that quite a bit, but I don't want it to stop at 98. I don't think we do either, but 
for you to to be here at a major championship in the state of Texas. I know as a mm. pr- very, very proud uh, Fort Worth <laughs> area yeah. resident, <laughs> what does it mean to have a major in your home state and to play in front of, I mean, not a hometown crowd, but a home state crowd at least? You know, this, again, going back to the beginning of my career, I just never dreamed. I, re- I remember, you know, Meg winning at Colonial. Um, and every time I would get on an airplane to leave the state to go to a major, I just... I thought it would never happen. And then to get to play the Open at Champions and now have Chevron here, you know, for the foreseeable future, um, it's pretty special. And and even if I came in on the tail end of it, I got to at least play here a couple years. So um, it's hard to ask for more than that. And, you know, and and I've kind of said if if this is my last Chevron, which I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure that this is it, I'm, I'm so content and so at peace with it. I think just last one for me. Let's hope it's not. You've been playing some good golf recently. Um, what's been what's been clicking for you? It seems like the putter's been kind of getting hot for you recently. Yeah, you know, I think um, so. This is going to be a long-winded answer. I hope that's okay. Um, you know, the thing about trying to get to a hundred and maybe needing some help. Um, this sponsor invite. If I don't qualify for the Open, if if the USGA extends a special exemption. I didn't just want to show up. You know, I, this off season, I really, really went back to work. Um, My friends kind of gave me a hard time because I gave up all my ski trips and it was literally work. I'm gonna, I was in with my trainer as much as I could. Um, And the thing I found out, it's easier to work on your short game when your body doesn't recover as fast. So I really went to work on my putting because these courses are longer. I'm going to have to get up and down more. My chipping has gotten a ton better. Um, So, you know, I I think the thing that was really important for me going into this year is that I needed to prove that I am playing well and I'm trying to play well because out of respect for a sponsor and out of respect for competitors, I'm not just going to show up and take up a spot. Beth Ann? As you know, there aren't very many many players over 40 week to week. (laughs) And we're saying goodbye to one player who's 33 and so young. What impact do you hope this road to 100 has on on the future generations? You know, I, I think all along, I hope players see it as one growth, and I hope they see it as opportunity. Um, you know, it's funny when I hear, you know, she's 33, and sometimes I catch myself because I'm like, oh, well, I'm only 40. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not 40. <laughs> So, you know, I forget how old I am out here because being around all these youngsters, um, I don't feel as old. But I hope hope the players now and the younger players realize that they're going to have a a choice. Like they're – they get – and I think that was a big thing for me in my career. Excuse me. When we kind of struggled in 2009, 2010, I say this all the time. I remember sitting in a player meeting thinking – I'm going to have to go find another job. Like, I don't, what happens if the LPGA Tour goes away? So I hope they see this streak as growth and their opportunity. And and if you look at where we came from in 2001 to today, I mean, just the total purse money. And not just money, like the events and the courses we play at the venues. So I hope they just take a second to think about okay, I I can play as long as I want. Um, I'm not sure this generation will because, you know, I'm not sure anybody will ever play past, there won't be many past 40. But I think that speaks to your tour too. I mean, these players are so good. And I'm going to kind of throw my trainer under the bus this time. When I got home, he said, well, what's the difference between, you know, what does Nelly have that you don't have? And I looked at him like, okay, a a foot at least and like 20 years um but he he was you know joking we were joking about it and i think that you know i i hope this generation understands that this tour's come a long way and i hope they see the growth i hope they see the opportunity and um, i hope they take care of this tour and what's your trainer's name and and lastly how is he preparing you for a 36 hole qualifier? <laughs> Uh, his name is Dan Riley. Uh, his his father's name is Paul Riley, who worked for Chevron for so long. Um, he's we've prepared. We started a long time ago preparing, and he, you know, my legs have been a point of, 
you know, you know, your legs have to be strong. Um, but it's been a lot on the recovery side. Like, how do you get up and feel good enough the next day to keep going? So at least I know that when I get off the plane Monday morning in California, I know exactly what I need to do that day and that night and be ready to go Tuesday morning. So we've, we haven't necessarily specifically talked about that day, but we've, in, in all of this off season, it's, it's been leading up to it, I guess. Ken? Speaking of Nelly, <laughs> what's it been like to watch her run? And where would you rank this streak over your 24 years out on tour? Oh, you know, I, I don't like comparing generations. I don't like comparing different players with different times. Like, I am always going to tell you Lorena Ochoa is the best ever, period. Like, that's just my opinion. And there was a time, I remember that in 2008, where I remember thinking, is anybody ever going to win again? Like, nobody's ever going to beat Lorena again. Um, obviously, Annika is great, but... Lorena had something, and Lorena had something that most people, nobody did. Um, I, I think Nellie's as close to Lorena right now as anybody. She just kind of has this, it doesn't matter what comes at her. Like she's had, she's, you know, the final rounds have been weather issues. And I mean, it's been terrible weather. Um, and it doesn't seem to phase her. So I think she's the closest thing to Lorena that, speaking of those streaks, I, I, that's what that's what I think right now. And talking about the course, you mentioned this is a venue you need to learn. But they underwent renovation since the last time mm -hmm. Chevron was here. How different is the course playing now versus last year? It's really not much different. Um, I, th I think number eight is the hole that they kind of keep talking about. And I've only seen it once, but it just changes where I aim off the tee. It doesn't change other people's <laughs> uh, target line. So for the most part, it hasn't changed. I mean, the greens are a little bit bigger, but I, I have yet to feel like it's a different course yet. And then Amy here. Why? Why put yourself through this mentally and physically <laughs> to pursue this goal? So uh, I had to make that decision this off season. Um, I love doing TV last year. I love the people. Um, I think I could do that you know, for the however many coming years, you know, I, I would love it. Um, I would love to still be a part of the tour. But I realized it was so close. I was three, I'm three majors away crossing that line. And I, I, I at least had to try. I got to try. Um, I think I would regret it forever if I just said, oh, I'm good at 97. Like, and again, only one human has ever done this. So I just, and I, I've had to, there's been a lot of different, like my faith is involved in this. Um, you know, I've had those moments and, and I wrote for a sponsor invite to Singapore and I didn't get it. And I remember thinking, God, this is, this isn't going to be as, this isn't my plan. My plan isn't going to go as, as I thought. Um, but I just, I had to try and I've always been the type that I'm going to give it everything I have until I'm finished. And, and I think this is it, you know, I think a hundred is my finish line. And, but now at least I have some peace about it now. Cause, and I struggle with that the last couple of years. When, when do you walk away? Like I've watched my friends do it. It's hard. Um, so it's, it's, it's actually been a blessing that I have this finish line that, you know, is pretty obvious. <laughs> so if you reach that goal this year, is that it? Will you walk away at that point? Yeah, you know, it's it's been pretty interesting. I I I was I don't really want to talk about it, which I think is weird because I'm one of those people. I'll I'll answer any question you you know. I I've always been that way. I'll, I'm an open book when it comes to media and and I I th it's been weird. It's like I don't really want to talk about it, but if I can get to a hundred, um, I want to go to Evian. And then I'll play my favorites this fall. And honestly, I think that's it. Um, I just, I've, the time I've put in this off season and getting to the point where it takes so much just to get up and play, you know, I, again, I've been really healthy and, and my body's just, it just takes so much more to recover. So again, it goes back to respecting the competition, respecting the game. If I can't give it 110%, I, it's time to go do something else.
what's the hardest part for you physically to be able to get out there now? I think just the next day. It's always, you know, mentally I feel fine. Mentally I can, you know, I can't wait to get out there. But, like, you know, Phoenix, I had something with my knee. Um, Vegas, my back, the last day when it dropped 30 degrees, didn't want to turn. This week I have something going on back here. Like, all I did was go to sleep. (laughs) So I think just that it's just mileage and it swings and, and, you know, I've asked a bunch of older players, and it's so funny, they would all say, you know when you know. But the one that really stuck out was Dottie. I, I got to talk to Dottie for a minute, and she said, you know, when I found myself rehabbing my body more than practicing, I knew it was time to go. And I thought, you know, I'm spending a lot of time trying to recover. So I think that's when you know, too. Like, there's so much more to life coming, and... So I'm, I'm not using the R word, and I'm not giving you a definite, but if I get to 100, that's going to be pretty satisfying. And, I mean, for me, that's, that's pretty special. That'd and be one, good. Sorry. One more in the front here, and then uh, we'll welcome in the next player. So with running your own foundation and having a career in golf, how or what characteristics overlap between the two, if any? Well, I mean, for me, with the foundation, integrity, honesty, um, giving back, you know, that's the thing about playing this tour for 24 years is I I certainly hope I walk away leaving it better. Same thing with the foundation. I hope I'm making somebody's life better. Um, But I think the being very honest with people and having some integrity because you're raising people's money, like you're taking their money and then you're using it to help others. I mean, you, you have to be, you know, very honest and very upfront and Um, So I think that's, you know, same with golf. Um, Integrity on the golf course and um, respecting the game. So, yeah, I think there's a bunch of overlap there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Angela. Thank you. Best of luck this week. Mm -hmm.